Good evening all and welcome to another video on All How the Ale. Tonight we are going for a beer from the AF Beer Club's virtual AF Beer Festival. It's from Mash Gang. It's this one. It is I Am Become Death Destroyer of Worlds. And that's a mouthful of a name and it took a little while to remember it as it is. Anyway, it is a Cryo New England IPA. Or at least it's what it tells me. And it says it features Kvake. I'm going to assume that's a yeast. Uh, Idaho 7, Cryo, Citron, Mosaic, Magnum and Galaxy. Now that is quite the complement of hops. And it does say on the side of the can too, put the pedal to the metal and crank it to 11. Lovely Spinal Tap reference there, boys and girls. Thank you very much. Uh, it says, we start with a complex malt bill, add a sprinkling of ancient Viking yeast, that confirms the quake, and top it off with a whole host of primo hops. Thick, hazy and dank AF. Now, I love a good dank New England IPA. In fact, I, lo I love dank hops. Mosaic can bring that in a big, big way. So I'm hoping it does here. Anyway, we've got the hop list. The other ingredients are water, rye, wheat, hops, oats, barley, maltodextrin, more hops, and chilli. Yeah. Now there was another Mash Gang beer that I had, I forget which one it was, it was um, it was a malt beverage they described it as, and that also had chilli, and that added a little something, couldn't really put my finger on it, but it worked. So, yeah, let's have a bit of that. I love the fact that the Mash Gang logo, right here on the back of the can, is very sort of black metal, that you can't actually read it, they're in red. If anyone told you that was Mash Gang and they didn't understand black metal, they would never be able to read it. Love it. Anyway, let's get it out and into a glass and see what we think because I've waited long enough. It's Friday night and we need a good beer. So we're going to pour into the freshly washed AF Beer Club Festival glass. The pour is really pale. Stupidly pale. And despite being freshly washed, that glass is filthy. I do apologise, boys and girls. Anyway, we have a beer that is murky. It really is murky. It's got the good traits of a New England in that sense. It's very pale, light straw coloured, and the head has pretty much dissipated. But I'll forgive it that, because most AF beers tend to do the same. So yeah, it's... I like the murk. We could talk about the colour. But we don't judge it by its looks, we judge it by what it smells and tastes like. Let's have a whiff. Smells nice. Juicy. It's light though. Bit of pineapple. Some stone fruit, which I do get quite often from Mosaic. The citra I'm struggling to get. But it's very light. So, do we get all those hops on the flavour? Find out. Cheers. Mmm, different. The first thing I noticed was the body is superb. New England IPAs are well renowned for being thick and juicy, as they say on the can. And it was not lying. It is a good, medium heavy body. There is an element of dank and I appreciate that. It's not massively dank, but it is there. And it is tropical, very light though, juicy. And as per the other mash gang beer that I've had, I can tell there's something different about this beer. If you asked me and I didn't know what was in it, I would never have said it's chilli, but it's adding a little savoury edge and it works. Carbonation is quite high, um, but it works with a beer. I would like a bit more strength in the flavour though. Finish on it is again what you expect on a New England, it's light. It's juicy, it's hoppy to a point. It's all right. Mm. So, before we give it my scores, we're gonna to go to the Aid Memoir of Untapped, which says that uh, I am become death, destroyer of worlds, otherwise known as death, because I had only 23 check-ins. 
And I imagine most of those are from the uh, the AF Beer Club's Virtual Beer Festival. And it's got an average score of 3.44. What am I going to give it, though? Let's find out, shall we? So, in terms of the looks, with a New England, I expect it to be, excuse me, murky as hell. Juicy. Excuse me, that's my burger repeating. It was very nice. It was as well. Homemade, of course. It's paler than I would like, but again, a New England ranges from quite pale like this one to really quite thick and deep orange. Um, and this is just kind of on the paler end of the scale. The head, you know, again, it's alcohol free, so I'm going to take that into account. There is no head left at all. On most New Englands I've had, full fat are generally big, juicy, sort of voluminous, Mr. Stay Puffed heads. This one, not so much. I'm going to give it a half point on the looks. Um, because I would like it darker. I would like it, yeah, just darker in general. So I'm going to give it a half. It looks nice and murky. You get all that point for that. Aromas on a New England, again, I expect juice in a big, big way. And whatever hop is in there, bringing out the traits of that hop. So with a mosaic, I expect stone fruit. I get stone fruit. With a citra, I expect citrus, you know, lemon. And I get stone fruit. I get a whiff of pineapple. I'm not getting much in the way of the lemon. Now, is that seven hops? Six hops? Where are they? One, two, three, four, five hops. I was wrong. Five hops. They are, they're present, but they're not massive. I would like them to be stronger on the nose. And again, it's, it's nice what there is. It's just a bit light. I would like a bit more of it. That's just me being greedy though. It is Friday. I've earned it. I'm gonna give it a 0.5. The body on a New England should be thick and juicy and mouth coating and the carbonation should be complementary to that. It's thick. It's... It coats the mouth nicely as it's in there. The carbonation is complementary. It's a little bit higher than I perhaps would otherwise like, but it works really quite well. I'm going to give it 0.75 because it's very, very good. For an AF, I don't normally get that sort of body, and this is a really good one. The taste. Now the taste, with that complement of hops, like I say, uh, Idaho 7, Citra, Mosaic, Magnum, and Amarillo. I would expect more from them. It is alcohol-free though, so I have to kind of bear that in mind and understand that every beverage has its limits, and when it's alcohol-free, you lose some of it, but it's nice. You know, the flavours are there. The chilli adds a little something that you, like I said, if you didn't know it was chilli in there, you would never say that it was chilli. It's tasty. It's juicy. It's light. It's got that savoury edge on the back end. I like it. And I'm going to give it 0.5. And the finish is everything that I look for in a New England. It's juicy. The hops are there. It's balanced. It's... Really quite tasty. And for me, with the body and the finish, they are the two best bits of this beer. I like them a lot. I'm going to give it the 0.75, which gives me one and a half, two, three out of five on the old untapped scoreboard of joy. There's my little board right there. So, I think I preferred the other Mash Gang beer that I had, but this is quite tasty indeed. It's certainly one of the best New England IPAs that I've had in the alcohol-free world. So yeah, another thumbs up to the uh, the boys and girls at Mash Gang and uh, double props for the artwork on the can as well because I love it. So before we uh, waffle dangerously into unknown territory, we're going to say that's been the beer. Those down there are the buttons. You know exactly what to do with them by now. You've got like, comment, dislike and subscribe. Do let me know in the comment section if you've tried the uh, death, as I'm going to call it, because it's much quicker to say. And I will see you again soon for another video. Bye.